you know I'm a cappy. And to see that Berserk has actually dropped in January and my birthday passed a couple days ago. Is that a coincidence here? 2020 is starting out hella right with Berserk chapter 363. What's up guys? This is Kalpa. We're going to be looking into today's chapter chapter 363 it's gonna be an incredible one the previous chapter it was pretty insane finding out a bit more of the berserker armor uh, origins we obviously knew that it was armor that was that used to be by skull knight and now we found out a couple bit of memories we saw a bit of a brand new god hand which we've never ever seen in the entire series so that's extremely new and we're basically continuing off of that i don't even remember when the last chapter was but this is going to be exciting i think this is going to be a journey both of us will enjoy so let's begin the first manga panel already brings us back to Eiffelheim. Guts is still in disbelief that uh, he basically witnessed an eclipse, but this is a very different kind of eclipse, if you guys have remembered. So it's very interesting to see that parallel, and you can see him say, is he the same as me? So he's definitely drawing parallels, obviously, but like we know, there have always been extreme parallels between Skull Knight and Guts since day one. Oh... This is insane. Seems like Skull Knight and the crew have found a mausoleum that's beneath a tree bark. From what they say, His Majesty, this knight's beloved, sleeps. So if you remember, the girl who was in uh, Geistrick's arms is now in here. So since we know that there are parallels between both Guts and Skull Knight, is this a fate that Casca might have to endure? Right when we're about to maybe get the origins, the Fairy King comes in here, asks, Do you come calling to visit the grave of the Lady Priestess of the Cherry Blossoms? We don't really know her origins, but I guess she's a Priestess of Cherry Blossoms. Interesting. But this is her grave, technically, so that means he's came to mourn her. Oh, her name is Danan. So, from what Shirika says, I too could see her for a brief moment. When I touched your armor, Danan is the spinning image of that woman. Oh! I, I, that makes sense. So let's take a look right here. So you can see in this photo that this is basically uh, Danan, Geistrick holding her. And if you look at the Elf King, um, she is also in, in garb as well. But the crazy thing is her shoulder, her right shoulder is covered. So we don't really know if she still has the the uh, insignia. I forgot what the name was, but uh, she doesn't have the, the sign. There we go. Would you look at that? Now we have both of these two together like this. So this is this is pretty crazy. This already adds another deep layer to Skull Knight that we really never have seen before. It's kind of surreal. I am a portent of doom, the remnant of a grudge. My aim is ever singular. I have not the heart to bathe in the lavency of my mortal day. Very interesting nonetheless to really see that. So Guts looks like that he is gonna stay away. He wants to kind of give him his space. I mean, rightfully so. He probably hasn't seen him, seen her in a while. So Shirike opens a direct line that we've been pretty curious since day one. And she just says, what kind of connection does Guts and Skull Knight have? And we go into, in her youth, your master Flora served under the Lady Priestess of the Cherry Blossoms. She was very fond of both of them back in the day. But her feelings were too strong after the Calatimus day when the Black Sun... Oh my god. So the Priestess knows exactly what went on, and since uh, Master Flora has served under the Priestess, she basically knows almost everything of what's going on. So Flora violated a taboo and was driven out and exiled from her island, so maybe this could have been it. Honestly, fuck this shit. I really hate this. We're about to really get some crazy, crazy backstory, and then we get... One of the fairies just cock blocking you, but at least we got a little screen time of Little Witch Academia, so that's something. Isidro, do something about monkey. She basically said, reject humanity, embrace monkey. So we're actually following the story of these guys instead of what's really going on with guts. That's great. Th thanks, Muta. I love you. Oh my god. Now, here's our monkey doing what he does best. He's wrapping everyone in uh, in cloth bandages, I guess you can say, and it's just... 
kind of entrapping though. This is funny. Shirike, please do something about your companion. He's gone into the woods to pick up medicinal herbs when he suddenly attacked us. Oh my god. <laughs> I love this comedic relief because you guys put me through t through hell. Already fallen to the dark side you have. Mm. Okay, you know what? I, I take back what I said. I, I love this kind of comedic relief. We need this once in a while, especially to kind of lighten the mood with what's going on. I kind of don't blame Yuta if you kind of think about it because it's it's a very lighthearted moment that seems like this was a lot more fun to to draw and probably depict than you know a eclipse where everyone's gonna die so that's i mean it's a nice parallel i'm not i'm sorry it's a nice difference okay i'm really appreciating all of these star wars references especially the clone troopers that have 66 on them and then unlimited power with your powers we will rule this island by padawan this is i gotta admit this is fucking cute Oh, he's horny. I'll see you howl and weep, and your pumpkin panties will be exposed. My Padawan is himself a master class in small time punkery. This is un unironically stupid good. So basically, now it's gonna be a Shirake versus Isidro, and he's gonna try to get everyone's panties whole. Wow, great plot line. It's funny though, I gotta admit. <laughs> Mage Girl says, I gotta respect someone who's honest with their feelings. Oh, and he gets all blushy. Comes Monkey. And he got eaten by a Kelpie. Hi, I'm Kelpie. You, is that me? That's dangerous. Hi, I'm Kelpie. That's very interesting. So we have a mermaid that just comes in with a random Kelpie, and I don't know why she's here. Same with Kelpie, you're incredible. That's my friend, I said. Wow, that's really cool. So last time that we seen a Kelpie, Guts actually had to kill him. This was chapters ago. This was like probably an arc or two ago. Oh, Isma. Let me see who was Isma again. Oh, okay. So now I remember Isma. Isma was during the chapter of the Sea God. I, it's been a long time, so I, I honestly forgot about that. But doesn't it doesn't surprise me that not only she was introduced there and now she's tamed the Kelpie. So that's that's very interesting to see. You and Sir seem to be well acquainted. It's not like I owe him some, but he shows up along the way to mouth off some damning prophecy or another. He's an ominous, ominous skeleton. Ironic. Skull Knight is driven only by a profound grudge and an endless rage. I wonder what parallel we can draw from that. Perhaps he is fascinated with you because you are much like his former self. Something that I'm really appreciative of these kind of chapters, the reason that they're slow is because it's a very contemplative moment where Guts needs to focus on uh, where to channel his anger and where to really direct it to. From the beginning of Berserk, we've always known that Guts has channeled his anger towards Griffith because of what he's done to the Band of the Hawk, everyone on the Eclipse, and anyone who was involved. But now, basically, while he does have parallels to Skull Knight, he has to find a way to draw that rage and redirect it towards something a little bit more positive so Guts can basically live and do what he needs to do. So. Revenge might not be the answer as much as he thought, and and I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing that. At least that's what my personal theory is. It is kind of bittersweet that Guts cannot see Casca, but he's able to see her through the window and that she's pretty much at peace. From then, he's going to start training and hopefully improve himself, like he always does. It's, it's his greatest distraction. And then from there, he remembers Griffith, and he stops. So I've actually seen this previewed on my Twitter pretty, pretty recently, but then out of nowhere, we see a small figure coming out from the moonlight, and of course, it's the Moonlight Kid. So why is he here? What is he gonna do? And the crazy thing is, of course, it says Berserk to be continued, so another hiatus. This The struggle that Guts has is just as bad as the one that we have. And that's it. That's pretty insane to see what's been going on. They're definitely a lot more insightful from what we know. Skull Knight is pretty much a direct parallel from Guts from almost everything that pertains to Guts, honestly. We do have a little bit of comedic relief with Isidro to kind of bring down the moments of uh, Guts finding the revelation of his armor and Skull Knight. And we do have the moments where Guts is a little bit contemplative and just trying to get through the moments even though he know he can't see Casca face to face. It's, it's bittersweet, so all we can do is wait and hope for the best. But that's it. What do you guys think of this chapter? I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and it was kind of fun to do that. Let me know what you think. Like, subscribe, comment, and always ring that notification bell. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much. 
Got a couple new videos for you soon. Take care.